Okay, reassurance. Assalamualaikum and very good morning to all. Uh, today topic is wireless communication systems. In our wireless communication systems, uh, we will discuss about the micro frequency, the radio frequency, and the infrared wave. In our previous lecture, we have already discussed about our wired communication systems. Uh, from wired communication systems, we have discussed about optical fiber communications. We have discussed about coaxial cable communications and twisted pair cable communication systems. Now, our new topic is wireless communication systems. In our wireless communication systems, is very uh, common uses of wireless communication systems is the mobile communication systems. Uh, our two topics, uh, I will discuss about the microwave transmissions and the microwave communication systems, also radio wave communication systems and the infrared wave communication systems. <clears throat> so here, uh, you show, uh, we have already discussed about the microwave frequency range. Uh, microwave frequency range is uh, 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. And for radio wave communication systems, our frequency range is A wave frequency range is 3 kilohertz to 300 gigahertz. And for the infrared wave communication systems, the frequency range is 300 gigahertz to 400 terahertz. So here is the uh, tower and here all the microwave links are connected uh, in a particular direction so that the microwave links can easily communicate uh, to the receivers uh, with the line of sight communications with the ground wave a ground wave or a surface wave propagation systems or the sky wave propagation systems. That is called the atmospheric propagation systems. Also, we can use the satellite communication systems for the microwave transmissions. Okay, so here is the antenna. Okay. Our waiting room is to know the what is the electromagnetic wave. As well, should we talk? Hello, yes, Achha, okay. So, I have to know what is microwave. Uh, microwave is the one kind of electromagnetic uh, radiations, right? Because there are two components of microwave signals one is electric field and another is magnetic field. So, here is the uh, blue color is electric field and uh, this electric field also the factor will know that the electric field has a particular directions and also the magnetic field is a factor and here is the red color is the magnetic field as uh, and the direction of propagations is the direction of the uh, z axis because here is the uh, if you, you consider the uh, vertical line that is called the y axis of the electric field and if you consider the x axis uh, uh, here, the x-axis represents the red colors, and this is the magnetic field. So the direction of propagation will occur uh, to the z-axis. So now, microwave are the form of electromagnetic radiations with wavelength ranging from one meter to one uh, millimeter. So why we will use the microwave? The main advantages of microwave signal is that it can easily tra travel through any uh, mediums. It, it can travel through uh, the air, it can travel through the space, and it can travel through the uh, water and in any objects. Because microwave signal is a one kind of electromagnetic radiations, and the microwave frequency range is very high frequency. And we know that if the frequency is higher, then the wavelength of the microwave, microwave signal is lower because frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional. We know that V equals to F lambda, and V is the velocity of the electromagnetic uh, signal, or V is the velocity of light. And if you divide the frequency, uh, if we, you divide the velocity with, uh, uh, with the frequency, then you can easily calculate the wavelength lambda. And if the frequency is high, then the wavelength is very minimum. And we know that for the designing of the antenna, we have to make the antenna the one fourth of the wavelength. So if the wavelength is minimum, then the antenna size is minimum. We know that in our communication systems, mobile communication systems, uh, in our mobile device, 
very small antenna that is called the transceivers. It can be easily connected to the uh, mobile phone in your mobile IC. So we have to use here the high frequency signals uh, so that the wavelength can be minimum. Okay, the frequency range is 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz. Okay. Now, microwave transmissions. For microwave transmissions, uh, is it transmission in form by voice data, television, telephony, or radio signals by microwave radio waves? Microwaves are widely used for point to point communications. Point to point communications, that is also called the uh, line of sight communications because there is small wavelength allows connectivity so, and the size of the antenna to direct them in narrow beams, which can be pointed directly at the receiving antenna. Okay, now we have to design the antenna propagation systems. Now consider the propagations. Okay, in micro communication systems, basically we have uh, classified the propagation systems in three ways. One is uh, space wave, so one is sorry, one is ground wave propagation, ground wave propagation, ground wave propagation, and the second is line of sight propagation, it's called the loss communications, line of sight propagation. And the third one is sky wave propagation. Sky wave propagation. Now, the frequency range for the wave propagations. For the ground wave propagations, the frequency range is uh, below 2 megahertz. The frequency is below 2 megahertz in the microwave frequency range, and the for line of communication systems, line of side communication systems, the frequency range is above 30 megahertz. 30 megahertz or above 30 megahertz. And for the sky propagation systems, the frequency range is 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz. 2 megahertz to 30 megahertz. Now, for the ground wave propagation systems, uh, that is called the surface wave uh, propagation systems. Actually, propagation occurs from the antenna, right? We know that there are two types of antenna. One is transmitting antenna and another is receiving antenna. And every antenna transmits the signal electromagnetic radiations. So for ground wave propagations, if you consider the dark surface, on the ground wave propagations, ground wave propagations or surface wave propagation. Now consider the antenna, this is the antenna, the tower and the antenna. When the antenna transmit the signal directly towards the surface, then this is called the surface wave propagations. And the frequency range for the surface wave propagation is 2 megahertz or below 2 megahertz. Because this frequency range has a particular uh, feature or particular characteristics of the signal, and the signal of this uh, frequency can easily travel to the uh, travel through the space or travel through the uh, any medium or travel through water, travel through uh, any house building and also the frequency range signal can bounce from any high rise building. This is the one kind of, this is the, the signal, if the signal uh, hit any wall, then the signal can easily bounce back and forth in various directions. And the back and forth directions and it can easily travel as like a, 
uh, tennis ball bouncing system. If you bounce a tennis ball in any ground, then the tennis ball can easily bounce uh, and shift one place to another place. So in accordance with this frequency, two megahertz and below the two megahertz systems, the ground propagation occurs. And actually, if for our mobile communication systems, if the tower, if the tower range is very high, but the antenna sends the signal to the receiver, this is the transmitting signal, and here is their mobile phone. Okay, it can easily receive the signal in ground wave propagation systems. Also, you can send the wave to the uh, tower. And the frequency range of these signals is also the ground wave propagation system. Okay. And another propagation system is the line of sight communication systems. So here is the microwave transmissions. For the microwave transmissions, microwave relations, and the line of sight communication systems about the 30 miles communication, 30 mile distance is the main microwave transmitting and receiving antenna and the microwave relay stations. So what is relay station? Relay stations uh, basically the one kind of receiving stations and the transmitting stations, which uh, receives the signal and also amplifies the signal. And also the signal is transmitted to the long distance for covering the long area. And also, uh, this is the narrow beam signal. We have to know what is narrow beam. Narrow beam means the signal frequency is very high and the wavelength is very low. And for this low wavelength, the signal can easily transmit through any obstacles. And for this reason, this is called the narrow beam. Now, the microwave link or hope. So what is microwave link and microwave hope? The connection of two fixed microwave sites via line of sites path. This is the connection of the two line of sight, right? Okay. And the microwave key parameters is one is hertz, one is frequency, another is amplitude, another is phase, and another is polarization. So we have no about the frequency of the signals of microwave signals. A measurement of a signal left to magnetic frequency expressed at the number of cycle per second. And the kilohertz, KZ, and of megahertz, and also the gigahertz frequency range, and also the terahertz frequency range. We know that megahertz signal 10 to the power 6, and uh, for gigahertz signal 10 to the power 9, for terahertz signal 10 to the power 12. And for the frequency, the rate of the wave waves uh, oscillations, right, measured in hertz. Also, you can uh, measure of the frequency in the digital communication system that is called a bit per second. We have discussed about in our bandwidth for voice band, the narrow band and for broadband. The amplitude, the strength of the power levels of the waves. Actually, the amplitude is the voltage levels or the power levels of the wave. For AMD communication systems, we have to define a particular uh, power of the devices. If the antenna frequency is high, if the antenna signal is very high, then the power consumed by the antenna is very high. This is the amplitude of the signal uh, of the power level. mobile use for so they can four G or three G or five G as a Tomarikana Joto to me can five G or six G score with the antenna power gain the bishop. এখানে যখন তুমি একটা ডিভাইস ইউজ করছো যে ডিভাইসে তোমার ম্যাক্সিমাম ক্যাপাসিটি দিয়ে সেই সিগন্যালটা পাঠাচ্ছে অর্থাৎ লং ডিসটেন্সে সাধারণত একটা মোবাইলের যে টাওয়ার থাকে সেখানে কিন্তু কভারেজ এরিয়া আইট মেবি 1 অর 2 কিলোমিটারস বাট ইফ দা কভারেজ এরিয়া ইজ ম্যাক্সিমাম 60 কিলোমিটারস অর 50 কিলোমিটারস ফর এ পার্টিকুলার টাওয়ার দেন দা ট্রান্সমিটিং পাওয়ার মাস্ট বি হাই এর জন্য বড় হচ্ছে রিসিভিং অ্যান্টেনা বা ট্রান্সমিটিং অ্যান্টেনার পাওয়ার যত বেশি হবে তত কিন্তু এখানে আমাদের ব্যাটারি ক্যাপাসিটি বাড়াইতে হবে 
Now the signal polarization, the orientation of the electric field driving the waves. So polarization is one kind of uh, is very important part of the electromagnetic wave propagations because the polarization takes place when that uh, signal passes from any passes through the any clouds or any uh, obstacle that can bend the signal in various directions. That is called the signal polarization. Or signal polarization, that is a big problem of the receiving antenna because we have to shift the position of the receiving antenna. If any cloudy area or if heavy rainfall or heavy rainfall, we know that we know that in our uh, dish communication systems, there are some signal flickering for heavy rainfall. Because in heavy rainfall, the signal uh, is polarized in various directions. And for that reason, the point to point communication that is called the direct uh, uh, receiving systems uh, can be shift from one place to another place. And so that we have to shift the antenna. So this is the one of the major problem of the microwave communication systems. Now, line of sight communications, it is a type of propagation that can transmit and receive data only where transmit and receive positions are in the view of each others without any obstacle between them. Example FM radio and radio connection systems. And we have to set that tower in very high risk building because of the obstacle. Now the antenna. The antenna devices that radiate or receive electromagnetic waves of certain frequencies. Is the microwave antenna? Is the microwave generator? We know the microwave generators is a antenna that can generate the electric field and the magnetic field. And the electric field and the magnetic field, the particular form and the horizontal form, and also the dimension of the particle and horizontal form uh, measures the antenna size. So the antenna size will define the waveguide, right? So which types of waveguide will you use for the transmitting systems? The waveguide may be rectangular waveguide, circular waveguide, and elliptical waveguide, or the corrugated waveguide. So at first, this is the technical waveguide, and this is the circular waveguide, and this is the elliptical waveguide, and also this is the corrugated waveguide. So what is waveguide? Waveguide is basically the one kind of uh, communication systems antenna in which a, the wave is directed in a particular direction so that the wave can easily travel from transmitter to receivers. So we have to use the waveguide. Actually, the wireless communication systems is a uh, scattered communication systems. But we know that for the optical fiber communication systems, for coaxial communication systems, for twisted pair communication systems, we have guide the waves to the medium. But we also know that the wireless communication system is an unguided medium. It is an unguided medium. But sometimes we have to uh, set the antenna to guide the wave in particular directions. So for the line of communication systems, we have to guide the waves in a particular directions, and then we have to use the waveguide. And there are four types of waveguide, rectangular waveguide, circular waveguides, elliptical waveguides, and the corrugated waveguides. Basically, these waveguides are uh, classified in accordance with the receiving tower or receiving antenna systems. The main properties of the active links now, Involve line of sight communication technology affected greatly by environmental constructions uh, constraints, including rains and fairings. Heavy have very limited petitions capabilities to the obstacles such as hills, buildings, and trees. And also, signals can be decreased during solar photon events. This is one of the major drawbacks of the microwave communication systems. Uh, the microwave tower and the microwave link or this is called the radio links uh, is, uh, have to set up a very high frequency also a set up a particular direction so that the signal can easily travel and the signal EK or signal absorption, signal attenuations can also be minimized from the media. Now the fading, what is fading? Actually fading is the uh, strength across the line, line link caused by the atmospheric 
disturbance like rain storms you know that can scatter microwave signal the lower frequency microwave bands offer the greatest possibility distance theoretically allowing for links in excess of 50 kilometers or 30 miles so fading why fading occurs when for heavy rains we know that for heavy rains there are some phenomena of signal polarizations there's a phenomena of signal polarizations. So what is signal polarizations? Now, consider the signal and consider the heavy cloud. That is the heavy cloud. Heavy cloud. When the antenna, when the antenna the transmit the signal, transmit the signal, then the signal can polarize due to the heavy rainfall or due to the water molecule. And the polarization may take place in various directions. The signal polarizations. Also the polarizations can occur due to the uh, water density of the cloud. The heat major polarizations occur as, li as likes. Signal polarizations. Now, you have said the antenna directed to the transmitter. So actually the signal will passes the direction of the propagation of the axis to the receiver. And we have said the antenna here, this is the receiving antenna, but for the polarizations, the signal will passes in various scattered line. And for this scattered line, actually the receiver will receive a very low frequency or the receiver will receive a, a small portion of the signal. And for this, for this reason, sometimes in our these signals, these communication systems or satellite communication systems or cable network systems, uh, the signals are very much low than are then the main signal. So this is the signal polarizations, and this polarization is also occurs due to the heavy rainfall. Now, here is the some fading issues because of the atmospheric uh, propagation systems. And actually the fading occurs due to the low frequency. This is the atmospheric challenges. Sometimes as heavy rainfalls or fogs or snowfall. Okay. So fog generally causes negligible loss in microwave links. Heavy rain causes negligible loss in microwave links. Air temperature has little impact on microwave links. Okay. Now, radium and protein cover. They tower tower Okay, there's yes, yes. So, radium and protective cover. I can actually see that there is a snowfall in the snowfall. There is a snowfall in the snowfall. So, there is a snowfall in the snowfall. So, there is a snowfall in the snowfall. So, this is a signal that is dictated. So, there is a coating. 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 So, there is a automatic heat theory. So, there is a coating. The tomato tower with a system, the other day, they can have this of this snowfall high, but they have this other one to be 
ঠান্ডা সেখানে তোমার জন্য ওই যে বরফ গুলা জমে আমার শ্রীকান্তটাকে লস করতে না পারে তার জন্য সেখানে একটা হিট প্রোডিউস করার একটা অপশন থাকে ওকে আচ্ছা নাও ম্যাট্রো ফ্রিকোয়েন্সিস এন্ড इट्स হোপ লেন্থ দিস এখানে ফ্রিকোয়েন্সি ব্যান্ড যেটা দেওয়া আছে এটা দাস তোমাদের মুখস্থ করার দরকার নাই বা সম্পূর্ণ মেমোরাইজ না করার দরকার না দাস একটু क्षेत्र मिनिम So for the amplitude radio broadcast, we use the frequency range 182 to 1600 kilohertz. So this is the frequency range. Our uh, most important frequency range here is the microwave frequency range for the microwave links, and for the mobile base stations for the ultra high frequency point to point communications, and for the uh, fiber optic links and for the video light. So for, actually for the Uh, microwave communication systems. The main frequency range is one to sixty gigahertz. This is the microwave links. This and the microwave the microwave links is the can be uh, used for the line of sight communication systems. And for the mobile base stations, we use the eight hundred to two hundred to two thousand twenty megahertz. And also the frequency range can vary from uh, one uh, neural service uh, pro provider to another. provider because the bandwidth can be classified for the uh, various companies for the diamond phone for um, bangali or for airtel or for robi the bandwidth is different so the so the frequency in the days uh, is also different for the different mobile communication systems now the low frequency versus the high frequency so we have discussed about the low frequency versus high frequency why we use the high frequency and when we use the low frequency communication systems the lower frequency microwave bands so for the greatest possible distance theoretically allowing allowing the links to access in 50 kilometers or 31 miles adaptive transmitting power controls So, what is adaptive transmitting power control systems? So, adaptive transmission control be considered dynamically at the power levels to compensate for any links uh, impediments. And, and adaptive modulations, adaptive modulations is used to dynamically switch modulations schemes according to the prevailing channel conditions. And typical modulation schemes selected for adaptive modulations are four quam and sixteen quam. Because this is the quadrature amplitude modulation. Quam means quadrature amplitude modulation, and this quadrature amplitude modulation defines the size of the antenna. Okay. So testers, I'm going to talk to you guys. I was going to discuss wave pop propagation. Okay, I'm going to ask about repeat. Okay, I'm going to talk about wave propagation, ground wave propagation, radio wave propagation, and disk wave. Uh, now, for the atmospheric uh, propagations or the disk wave propagations. 
this is the hard surface and this is the anesthetic zone this is the anesthetic zone and this is the tower and here is the antenna and also is the receiving antenna and when you transmit the signal towards the sky then the signal bounce back to the receiving antenna this is called the sky wave uh, propagations and this coverage area for the sky wave profile propagations may uh, 100 to 200 kilometer or above 200 kilometer range because the earth surface is not the flat surface আমরা জানি যে আর্থ সারফেস সাধারণত একটু অরবিটাল শেপ বা একটু বাঁকা হয় তাই না সো এখানে যদি ফ্ল্যাট শেপ না এজন্য আমাদের এখানে একটা অবস্টাকেল থাকতে পারে লাইন অফ সাইট কমিউনিকেশনের জন্য এটা করতে হবে আমাদের সিগন্যালটাকে যেন সরাসরি আমরা আর এস এর জন্য পাঠাতে পারি এবং সেখান থেকে যেন সরাসরি আমাদের মানে ফিডব্যাক হতে পারে এবং এবং এই সিগন্যালের ক্ষেত্রে আমাদের একটা বিষয় লক্ষ্য রাখতে হবে আমাদের সিগন্যালের ক্ষেত্রে ফ্রিকোয়েন্সি রেঞ্জটা হবে 2 থেকে 30 মেগাহার্স এর ভিতরে ভ্যালি করতে পারে সাধারণত আমরা স্যাটেলাইট কমিউনিকেশনের ক্ষেত্রে সিগন্যাল একটু হাই ফ্রিকোয়েন্সিতে পাঠাতে পারি কারণ হাই ফ্রিকোয়েন্সি সিগন্যাল যেন আমাদের ক্লাউড এর ভিতরে পাস করে আমাদের স্যাটেলাইট কভার করতে পারে তাই না স্যাটেলাইট কমিউনিকেশনের ক্ষেত্রে যেটা হতে পারে সেটা হলো তোমার সাধারণত আমি যদি বলি যে আমাদের আর সারফেস থেকে যখন স্যাটেলাইটের সিগন্যালটি পাঠানো হয় তখন দেখো যাওয়ার আর সারফেস দ্য অ্যান্টেনা দ্য satellite okay and we have to set the satellite uplink frequency uplink frequency and the receiving antenna set the downlink frequency downlink frequency and this frequency is also the microwave frequency range the uplink frequency set 4 to 40 gigahertz and the downlink frequency also say sent 4 to 35 gigahertz 4 to 35 gigahertz Actually, the generating frequency from the satellite antenna uh, frequency is lower than the uplink uh, frequency because we know that for the high frequencies that generator, we have used the maximum power. In our earth surface, the antenna can easily uh, take the power from any basic stations, any power source. But, but for the satellite communications, it is a very uh, I mean, it is a great difficult uh, to generate the downlink frequency and the power source the main factor for the satellite because satellite power comes from the solar panel and for this reason we have to generate the frequency so that we can use the minimum power from the solar energy so for this reason we have to set the downlink frequency lower than the uplink frequency and the distance of the satellite uh, is from the ground is 34,000 kilometer or 22,000 mile. This is the uh, distance of the satellite from the uh, surface. Okay. So for the satellite communications, we also use the microwave frequency. So distance, I mean, as the policy, in Chicago, Tomorrow, Shop to Mustabarso, or Basak to uh, you follow our to the tone of the conversation. I mentioned answer the test.